and you are watching Dr. Walls and Friends on the Sisters in Harmony Network. Where is my passion purpose? Where can I find it? Where is my passion purpose? Where can I find it? Where is my passion purpose? Where can I find it? Dr. Walls and Friends, where I find it? Dr. Walls. Hello and welcome to Dr. Walls and Friends. I'm Dr. Kathleen Walls and we are live at the African Diaspora International Film Festival on UCCN TV. And I am sitting here with several people who are key people in this film festival, but also throughout their countries and what they bring to the world of film. So I'm gonna have each of you introduce yourselves and your role kind of in the film industry. Um, hello, my name is Nolita Chinaba. I'm a filmmaker from South Africa. I was born in the Eastern Cape, um, Port Elizabeth, and I moved to Johannesburg because that's where our industry is. Well, it is growing now. I mean, we've got KZN, we've got Cape Town, and I believe the Eastern Cape and Limpopo are also coming up. So, yeah. <laughs> um, in my role in... Um, the African Diaspora International Film Festival um, was based on a project that I did back home with the National Film and Video Foundation, which is our agency that funds filmmakers. Um, the project was called the Female Filmmakers Project. Mm -hmm. So it was all about let us, you know, uh, empower young women, emerging filmmakers. Let's prepare them. So it was a short film project. So I got to to be one of the filmmakers and you know what people say they say women cannot work together and that is a myth <laughs> because in in in, in the miniaturist um, just that short film I worked with two other filmmakers I was a trainee director and Biatha was the director Biatha Mgoza and I co-wrote it with Lindy Wemkonza so we defied all <laughs> everything that's believed about women we worked together till the end and we collaborated well you know we learned a lot of things about each other we learned a lot of things about storytelling we learned a lot of things about women you know bringing women together and getting them into a collaborative space. Wonderful. Well, thank you for being a myth buster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Hello. I'm Mabatu Ramakoshi. I'm the chairperson of the National Film and Video Foundation. Mm -hmm. That is an agency in South Africa that funds the development of film. Our main mandate is to ensure that the film industry grows in South Africa mm -hmm. and we give funding from the whole value chain, from script writing to post-production. And as she's saying, uh, we thought besides funding the different aspects of film, mm -hmm. we wanted to specifically focus on, we on women and young women. Mm -hmm. So we then called the slate where we're saying we want to see finished product of young women who should not even want to stress about money. Mm -hmm. We're saying here's money, just give us 10 films. Mm -hmm. And these young women wow. came together and they produced the beautiful product that we're seeing now yes. in, in, in the, the festival. We also said the same thing that about young men. Mm -hmm. that we want to see 10 films produced by young emerging black uh, filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So I think as you're saying, the women finished first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're still are waiting for the, still for, waiting. Yeah, we're still waiting for the final product. Festival, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're waiting for the final product of the young men. Mm -hmm. But however, I mean, for us to, to be able to transform the industry, mm -hmm. we needed to say we're going to put our money where our mouth is. That's right. Mm -hmm. And say, okay, 
every year for the coming three years. Mm -hmm. We want to see 10 films made by Imagine Filmmakers nice. and we'll fund them 100%. Wow. So we then also paid for them to come here to the festival. And I was going to mention, yes. that's amazing. Yes, we paid for them to come to the festival so that people can start consuming our stories. Yes. Because if we don't do that, we'll be telling our stories to ourselves. Yes. And we want the world to know the, the talent that we have in South Africa, mm -hmm. hence we're in this festival. Well, let me ask you this. There's so many filmmakers, there's so many film festivals and opportunities to show films. Why was coming to this one so important for you and for the organization? It was important because ADIF this year focused on the 20 years of South African democracy. So we are celebrating our 20 years since we got our freedom and this whole week was just focusing on that. Mm -hmm. Therefore it was an opportunity to say to America and New York that in the 20 years we have progressed. Yes. In the 20 years, see what we have made, and these are the people that are telling those stories, and we are saying as, as the NVF that we want our filmmakers to tell their stories in their own language, mm -hmm. because before we would consume our films, written by other people, yes. and even the context, that will be different. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, let our filmmakers tell their stories. Yes. And we came this the, for, for this uh, festival to celebrate 20 years of freedom, to also celebrate the, our, our icon, Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. because we, we, the opening was done at Riverside Church, yes. and as you know, that, that was the first time when he came to the U.S. after his release in prison, he came to the church. Yes. So this is where we, we are really celebrating. That's beautiful. Yes, we're celebrating. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we have two ladies here that joined as one in, in <laughs> some ways. <laughs> Work right. way. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So introduce yourself and your role here. Okay, I'm um, Hena Renfer. First of all, I'm an um, anthropologist and a non Western sociologist making film. Yes. Um, I used to work, well, I'm still working making educational films for television, mm -hmm. and then I'm an independent documentary maker working together with Saskia Vredeveld. Mm -hmm. I was born in Suriname. Suriname is former Dutch Guyana, yes. former colony of Holland. Therefore, I grew up in Holland. Speak Dutch, <laughs> but I also got a native language, Creole language. Mm -hmm. So I'm Caribbean. Okay. And um, well, Saskia was born in South Africa. 14 years ago, we started working together because I got an assignment to do something on South Africa. Mm -hmm. I looked for all the South Africans that were in Holland at that particular moment, and I was looking for Saskia. I could not find her. I find other South Africans. We worked together, and then a couple years later, we met on the ITFA, the International Documentary Film Festival, and from that moment on, we start working on South Africa because what she's doing is South Africa. Okay. That's uh, all, everything Saskia is doing mm -hmm. is about South Africa and I may say that to know her country better mm -hmm. and to come in terms with things she left behind. Yes. And that is something that I as an anthropologist, um, and how do you say it? I. I learned from that mm -hmm. because um, if you look at Saskia, she's a white South African, but she's not an Afrikaner. Okay. She come. Well, you may you can tell your own story, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I said you told You said it. You said no, it. but the whole thing is it it brings up very interesting discussions yes. because I'm an outsider looking at South Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, of course I come with questions like, how did you grow up? Mm -hmm. And did you go to another school, you know, things like that. And it brings her to think also of her way of life in South Africa yes. and looking at the new South Africa. We did this project together. I was on Robben Island a couple of years ago and um, shooting for something totally different. And it was about the Cape Malay on mm -hmm. the Upper Cape. And uh, our driver said, you all people are coming to... Uh, Robin Island for Nelson Mandela and I said well 
to be honest, we're not here for Nelson Mandela. We're shooting something else. And he said, but nobody knows the story of Ahmed Katrada. And to be honest, I didn't even know who Ahmed Katrada was. Mm -hmm. And he started to tell us, as you know, the crew, that Ahmed Katrada was one of the eight of Rivonia. Mm -hmm. And at that particular moment, I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to take the story to Holland. Mm -hmm. And took the story to Holland and I went to Saskia who was doing another film and I asked her, I said to her, I would love you to direct this one because this is your history mm -hmm. and I know it would bring discussion. Yeah. And she said yes and from that moment it was a journey of seven years but we did it together and this was, you know, it was also an eye-opener for me because now you're sitting there with somebody who really lived Robben Island. Yes. And you're sitting with his family who lived apartheid. Mm -hmm. And the traumas and everything. And I think we traveled constantly like four years up and down. Mm -hmm. And and I, I can say it. Ahmed Katrada, I call him Mr. K, became like a grandfather who is telling his story to his grandchildren. And that makes it very special. Yes. And to be here on Adif, um, I also said to Diara, it's not about us as makers, it is the story of Ahmed. Yes. that we want to be told, mm -hmm. you know? It's not about us. And that's why we are here, and it Wonderful. is fantastic to be among South Africans and see their product. That's right. Because we had the International Documentary Festival in Amsterdam a week ago, and we had also all the South Africans, and it gives you pleasure to see that 20 years of democracy you see people come up with their own stories because South Africa is full of stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I call South Africa my second homeland. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's fantastic that you're telling your own stories now and not, it's not with, you know, other people are telling you about your country, your, your um, history. history. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said to Saskia, Saskia, this is, this is more your festival than mine because you're Af you're a South African, and she was telling her stories in Holland, and now I mean on this you know you can be together and and it's your history either way, so that's let's, mine. Let's let's hear from let's hear yeah. from Miss yes. Saskia. Well, <laughs> <laughs> But most of it has been said no, by no, Hannah. No, like no, I said, no. uh, she talks for the two of us. Yeah. But uh, my, so. my, the way I so. yeah. receive it, yeah. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Saskia Vredeveld. Um, actually, I was born in Cape parents, immigrants who came to South Africa after the Second World War. But eventually they went back. My mother was always homesick for Holland. And I was 17 and she said, we're going back. And I said, what? Going back? But Cape Town, it's my home. She says, no, but my home is in Holland. So anyway, I'm carrying my mother's um, um, journey. I'm, I'm doing it exactly the same because now I'm up and down between the two countries and also questioning my own identity. What am I? Am I a Dutch? Am I a South African? But living in Holland for the, my whole adult life, I've always been homesick, so I always go back mm -hmm. and so I always make uh, many documentaries. And also, um, South, uh, Holland has a very troubled relationship with South Africa mm -hmm. about the past. So we've seen a lot of documentaries being made, but I always try to, I think, it's more complex and I want to show the other stories, the other side. So eventually uh, for Dutch television I made those stories. For um, And uh, for me it's also a, um, a means of coming back. Yes. And so I'm still forever going up and down. Right. Now I'm like my mother homesick for yes. Holland, I'm homesick for South, KSA, for yeah. South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And also discovering where do I come from. Um, how was I formed as a child? Mm -hmm. What is the society I come from? 
you know, and so it's all these issues I'm questioning yeah, and yes. so on. And also your your place in the new South Africa. Mm -hmm. Because I think people who left South Africa like Saskia, in the new South Africa, you can't, there are issues. You're going to ask yourself, that's okay, right. where is my place now? Right. And I think that's very important also to look at that. I think definitely that anthropologist yeah. is coming out of you. Oh, yeah. You can't, you can't help it. You can't, you can't help it. Sometimes I would say to her, okay, this is the anthropologist who's yes. asking you questions yes. now. Yeah. Well, let's take a quick commercial break. I'm not going to keep you much longer because I know we have some films to go watch. Mm -hmm. But I just want to ask when we come back, just to talk briefly about being women in this industry. Because one of the things that you mentioned was that influence of young women, young ladies growing up and seeing each of you do what you do and being inspired by that. So we'll just take a quick pause and we'll come back and take maybe about five more minutes and then we'll yeah. go okay. check out some films. Yeah. Sound good? Sound good. All right, we'll be back shortly on Dr. Walls and Friends. Ruby Burke of Children's Book Workshop is Vice President and Executive Director of Operations of Sisters in Harmony. Ruby is an international author, mentor, and speaker. As a survivor of domestic violence, Ruby actively speaks about this topic both nationally and internationally. Ruby is the author of Survivor's Emancipation Day and Yap Yap the Talking Horse. Ruby also works with youth to build their self-esteem, combat the effects of bullying, and understand the importance of developing their goals and realizing their dreams. For speaking engagements, mentoring workshops, or book signings, call Ruby Burke, 301-523-9498, www.rubyburke.com. Welcome back to Dr. Walls and Friends, and I'm sitting here at the African Diaspora International Film Festival with several key people in the film festival. And before we went on break, we started to talk about women in the film industry. And each of you play very different roles and have played very different roles in the film industry. How important is it to represent women in the film industry? I'm going to start with you. Yes. <laughs> It's, it's important to, I mean, women have their own stories to tell. Mm -hmm. They've got their own lived experiences that only women understand and know. Mm -hmm. And if, if you look at how women are depicted in the film industry, you realize that the voice that is in there, the lens that was put is, is, is male lens. Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference between a film that is made by a woman and a film made by men yes. representing women. Mm -hmm. Because socialization comes out, patriarchy comes out, mm -hmm. while when it's a woman telling her own story, you see the voice of this matriarch mm -hmm. who says, this is who I am, mm -hmm. and this is what the space, the space that I want to occupy. So I think it's critical that women play a very important role in the film industry. And I think if, if in South Africa for na at the moment, because of our history, Mm -hmm. The film industry was mostly male and white. Okay. So uh, the government then created our agents like ours, mm -hmm. whose main uh, objective was to build the film industry and even put money to it. Mm -hmm. Now, for us to redress that imbalance, you cannot leave women outside mm -hmm. because they were not in the mainstream. So we had to ensure that we bring women in the mainstream and we say to them, we want to even assist you to build sustainable businesses. That's wonderful. Because the only way that can we make women become serious players is to have companies that can feed their families. Yes. Just like if you look at all these big studios, they started somewhere, supported by somebody else. Mm -hmm. So we're supporting women to start businesses that will be sustainable so they can be mentors for other young women yes. and then the we, we now have this critical mass mm -hmm. of women who are in the majority anyway in our country mm -hmm. who will be telling stories from the women's perspective who will have less violence yes. but also empowering and growing mm -hmm. in, in terms of content mm -hmm. so that's that's very critical for us yes mm -hmm. now i see you nodding away <laughs> I mean, she's a filmmaker she'll tell us <laughs> yeah. um 
Yes, it, I mean, it's very critical. We, we all know, like we have different experiences and different voices. But I think one of the funniest thing that I always got when I said I want to be a film director or a TV director is like, um, you have a production experience, so you could be a production manager. I've always been reduced to that. And then I had to fight my way like out and say, you know what, Ma, this is my decision. I'm not going to work anymore. I would like to build my own production company and I would also like to tell stories because that's where I started. When I was back home, I was a, a director. I started as a documentary uh, director. So now when I came to Joburg and you go to internships, you kind of like you lose yourself a little because of the socialization and the conditioning. Here is this young black woman. She's doing a PA internship. Okay, she would like to grow. Great. So you see people helping you out, but you're like, but you're not helping me to the direction I would like to go. And you keep on saying it. You keep on saying, um, I would like to be a creative producer and, and, a, and a director, please. But no one is listening and no one will listen to you till you do it. So what I've learned was that, okay, just get out of it. Show people what it is that you want to do. Because then maybe when they see and they can maybe see you differently and maybe they can give you a chance. But another thing I would like to say is that in my early days, I've, I had a lot of men like taking me under their wing, mentoring me. Like somehow I think they believed in me and they kind of like nurtured this. So as much as there's still that conditioning, but if you, we as women don't take the opportunities, don't step up, because when we get there, when you get on set, there's no man or woman. <laughs> <laughs> there is a director <laughs> and the director needs to know what she <laughs> or he is doing and if you get there and you're not prepared and you don't know what you're doing yes. people will look at you and they're like what are we supposed to shoot mm -hmm. and so we also need to somehow as long as we uh, uh, excuse me as much as we voicing the the women in us but we must also remember that when we get into the field there is no man or woman, so we need to know our story and we need to fight for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The only thing I want to add to it is that what I find very important nowadays, especially in South Africa, normally the story was, you know, his story. Yes. And now it's from, it's her story. Mm -hmm. And from that point of view, that is what I, you know, like you're helping your organization, all these women, from their point of yes. view, so that we can learn from those women. That's right. And they become role models wow. from the next generation. I think that is... Yeah. You sure? Yes, yes. I just want to add, have you seen how um, women leads are portrayed? Like what you, it's his yes. perspective yeah, his, yes. of how she should yeah. be. Yeah. So you're quite right. It, it, it's his. Mm -hmm. Now we need to take it back and make it her. You know, and give her depth and give her character and really go into yes. this woman who she is. You know, deep down and reveal the characters. Yeah. Well, I think this is this is a great. We, you know, all of you in the film industry know the wrap up sign and. We've received the wrap-up sign. <laughs> so, yes. As much as we don't want to wrap up, we have to wrap yeah, it up. <laughs> but what we can do is we can always continue this conversation on radio. Yes. And yes. so we'll have to make those arrangements so okay. we can talk about her story. Yep. And, you know, it's interesting. One of our sister friends over in South Africa, Lyra, is currently doing her Her Story tour. Yeah. And so we'll be okay. talking with her next week. Okay. And um, But we'll, we'll arrange a time. I thank you all for taking this time with us and sharing your stories well, thank you. with thank us. You. Thank you. All right. And enjoy. You're welcome. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the festival thank and continue, you. of course, to touch many people's lives. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. All right. Thank and we'll you. be back on Dr. Walls and Friends.
The Greatest Soul Journey by Dr. Kathleen E. Walls is a workbook-style journal designed to assist you in taking an honest look at your life. This journal will provide you with clarity and help you assess your life, your relationships, your thoughts and beliefs, and the ways in which you are working toward your greatest life. For copies of The Greatest Soul Journey, go to AskDrWalls.com. That's A-S-K-D-R-W-A-L-L-S dot com. And remember, live your greatest life. Orisha she, ti gbogbo mi ni yonbo. Ti wo si bo ofun, ti a si ngba agbara lowo nwo. An lu agbara nwo lati sise iyanu. She's here. Welcome back to Dr. Walls and Friends. I am here with an incredible filmmaker who many of you had the opportunity to hear on the radio show the other day, and now you get to see her face, fresh from Jamaica, bringing me a little bit of warmth <laughs> in this cold New York moment. So please introduce yourself to our audience. Okay. I'm Karen Marks Mafundiko, and I'm um, from Jamaica. Uh, currently based in Jamaica. I lived in New York for a long time and relocated to Jamaica where I am making films. I'm showing a film here at African Diaspora Film Festival. Yes. And so I'm very happy to be on the program to talk more about that film and my uh, other work that I have I'm in progress. And so we just had the opportunity to watch the screening of mm -hmm. your film, The Price of Memory, and now, how do you feel? We, you know, we have been anticipating it. I know I've been anticipating it since we talked last week. And I know what I'm experiencing, which I'll share in a moment. How are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> well, every screening is different. So for me, I'm, I feel good. I'm in New York. You know, it's ho it's like home for me. Although I'm, you know, obviously I'm not wasn't born here, but mm -hmm. New York is home for me. And um, there are people here who I grew up with in indie film, because basically I was working in television and decided that I was going to make independent documentaries instead. Yes. And having been joined, you know, that organization, Black Documentary Collective, mm -hmm. I was empowered and inspired by other people who were also making documentaries. So some people were here and it was great to see them yes. and then just people from all different aspects of my life and other people who are just interested in the film. So mm -hmm. the fee I think I'm happy with the response I think people came away feeling like it was a good experience they learned something yes. and you know we're inspired by the lives of the people in the price of memory mm -hmm. so I feel good yeah I would say that that would definitely the feeling sitting with the audience was how much people learned from the film and how much there still is to learn mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people want as you talked about in the film the movement that's discussed so you have to watch the film to find out what we're talking about so to, but for for them to want to seek out the mm -hmm. information and you sort out a lot of information for us in this journey. <laughs> Yeah, um, well I like learning and um, I'm a storyteller mm -hmm. but I think you have a talent and you want to leave a body of work that says something long after you know whether you leave the earth or not. So I like learning. I was researching but it wasn't always work it was like I was learning mm -hmm. I was discovering and also I think there's so much power in being able to control the image yes and just edit you know what goes on the screen what stays off the screen mm -hmm. so I feel a great responsibility mm -hmm. with that 
um, access to have to tell stories. So hence, you know, the the, the synergy of learning, yes. teaching, and also educating and informing. Yes. And still, you know, you have to at the end of the day, it's not a lecture, so you mm -hmm. have to inspire people and, you and know, entertain make it them in the yeah. process as well. Yeah. And I think one of the things that was so profound to me at the end was that and. For those of you who didn't hear the radio interview, this was a 10-year journey for you that you didn't realize was going to be 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, um, when I started, I thought, oh, maybe two years, you know. But I didn't realize how complicated it was. And, well, maybe the route I took. Maybe somebody else would take something that's just kind of straight. Mm -hmm. But I wanted it. Yeah, so I was following people and their lives are evolving, That's the right. lawsuits are, are going through and then mm -hmm. I had to look at the history and so it's kind of a, almost like a call and response. That's how I always saw the film. Yes. It's a call and response between the past and the present. Mm -hmm. So that took a long time to see it, to understand how I was going to tell it and then to execute it. Yes. You know? so. During the question and answer, I heard you say it was also lengthy because you had to build relationships with people yeah. for them to trust you to right. share certain parts to the story right. that were not being shared with the general public and mm -hmm. now this was going to be shared on a world stage. Yeah, for example, the scene where Russ Lyon, the wrestler man who's kind of one of the main people in the film, when he told me about his mother, his grandmother and rape in the family mm -hmm. and all the stuff she told him about slavery, I knew him for a few years. He wouldn't just walk up and tell anybody exactly. something like that. So, that. so I wanted to show how for him it was more than just, okay, politics. It was so personal. That's he grew right. up with that history. That's right. So what's driving, you know, mm -hmm. all of these various people? And for him, it was just this profound thing that as growing up, his great-great-grandmother had all these stories from that she had that had been passed on in the family about yes. slavery yes you know so yeah you don't get those things by just research and no, talking you do not. yeah people no, have to don't. trust you and also you know you have to show that you have integrity and you're going to honor them and show their story with dignity that's right yeah that's so. right and it was amazing to watch as i was saying what was so pro one of the things that was so profound to me was to see in one part of the movie the baby oh yeah right. and then to see the age of the child at the end of the movie because so many times we'll see dates 2002 right, right, 2007 right. 2013 yeah, <laughs> but you look at the growth of a child from a baby right. to a child and all of a sudden you go oh my goodness this much time has passed yeah well and also time is important because there are people in the film who spent their whole lives uh, much of their lives working you know uh, advocating for reparations yes. so for me 10 years you know um that's okay that's my contribution mm -hmm. but this is real for them it's not just you know a cause of the month it's uh a li th this is they live it yes you know they live it exactly. like Fillmore Alvarango who the old man yes he passed away Oh, wow. A month ago, oh. he was at the premiere in Jamaica, and it was, you know, and he said to me, he was happy with the film, he liked it, and I felt really good because when I was interviewing him, he told me that, you know, people have interviewed me before, and I've never seen them again, and wow. he's not seen the film, you know, whatever, they, people came from Germany, all over mm -hmm. the world, I interviewed him, mm -hmm. so I felt a real responsibility for him to see it and approve, and yes. just for you to also own your story, because I think... Um, the main thing, reason I made the film was I wanted us to know our own story, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's about, yeah, Jamaicans knowing the story, but also African Americans knowing what Jamaicans experienced. That's when right. we talk about reparations, where that would come from, where the history came out of. Yes. And because we're very familiar with the African American story, we see it on the news, you know, we heard about mm -hmm. Martin Luther King and all the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. etc. But the Caribbean story isn't that well known, That's right. especially Jamaica's story, yes. and many Jamaicans don't know that story. Mm -hmm. So, but I think it resonates beyond Jamaica. There's yes, so many similarities yes. with Jamaica, with Brazil, the Caribbean, the US, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Throughout so, the diaspora. Yeah. So, yeah, so for me, <laughs> it was just get about telling that. Wonderful. Well, you know, as I, we talk a little off camera, I love to talk to people about their passion and their purpose. And when did you know storytelling, that you were a storyteller? I've known all my life. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't know. When I was growing up, I think I may have told you this, I was really a, a TV addict mm -hmm. and I used to read, read, read and watch, watch, watch. When other people were playing, I mean, yeah, I'd play, you know, there's some game, but 
really I guess I'm kind of a bit of a nerd okay. and my thing was storytelling and I like learning so yeah and then when I came to New York to study uh, I decided I was going to do journalism and then when I started that I realized that I wouldn't have the space to really do longer the, the short thing was just too short like yes. those three minutes you have to tell a news story mm -hmm. so I realized that I was going to be in documentary okay. and so I, I just always kind of known that mm -hmm. it was I learned, you know, in college I worked for a documentary filmmaker yes. and uh, then I knew, okay, I can do this and yeah. And so for those who are up and coming or mm -hmm. maybe their interest might be a little peaked at this point, mm -hmm. any words of inspiration to them? Okay, yeah, I think all of us have a story to tell. Um, it doesn't have to be about you, but there are people around you that are interesting that we've never heard of. And all of us have some family story or something that fascinates us that we can tell a story about. I'd say do something you're passionate about. Don't worry about is it going to be commercial or is it not going to be commercial. You know, from that you can build something from that because that will really drive you. If I wasn't passionate about this, I would not have remained with it as long as I That's did. Right. I mean, I was offered all kind of other options, but it would not leave me the time mm -hmm. to work on the film, so I had mm -hmm. to make a lot of hard choices. But everybody has a different driving force, but I would say stay true to you, find mentors who can mentor you, stick around with people who are really serious about the craft and who you can learn from you know, who are going to encourage you when there's nothing going on and just try to learn as much as you can about the craft. Yes. You know, you have to always try to get better and um, tell a story you want to tell. Okay. Yeah. And just one last question because I know you're going to go spend some time with family and friends. This was a 10 year journey for you. Mm -hmm. At times, as you said, other author offers came in. Mm -hmm. Those moments of discouragement or what am I really doing with this? <laughs> yeah. How did you get past that? Oh, gosh, that's a long... Because so that's a, I had a dream. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it... I go for it. No, well, I had a dream. I was in Jamaica, and it was kind of weird. Because uh, this is what, probably a year and a half into making the film. I had a dream where I just returned from Africa for the first time. I went to Africa and came back. Okay. And I had a dream that I was in Jamaica and... Long story short, I'm meeting all these people and it's about reparations, reparations, reparations mm -hmm. and I meet this old lady, chocolate skin, white hair, beautiful woman mm -hmm. and she says, when I got to her, because I was meeting all these people, she knew me already. Mm -hmm. I, she, I wasn't being, she's like, she just said, oh, you're the girl working in reparations, come here, my daughter. And oh, when wow. she held my hand, yes. uh, this is not a scary movie, <laughs> when she held my hand, right? I was not in Jamaica anymore. I wasn't on the earth anymore. I was like, sky, what is that? The astral travel? Or yeah. The, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, the force of whatever came out of her hand that touched oh, me. Oh, wow. I was like this. And it was the, mo it's the most profound thing I've yes. ever experienced, whether yes. awake or asleep. <laughs> yes. So when you have a dream like that, right? Mm hmm when there was nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean, in myself, I knew why I started to have to finish. Mm -hmm. But then I just would remember how I felt of that. Yes. Literally. And that would last for, that lasted me for years. I, I'm sure. And it's a good thing that happened early because <laughs> <laughs> that took me through years. Yeah, really. It I had mean, to be a most, profound experience to carry you through. Yeah, I mean, and also, you know, you're, it wasn't about me. Yeah. It was never about me. Yeah. So whether you are discouraged, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. You're the vessel Go through ahead. which the story is coming. Yeah, she gonna make me shit. <laughs> so, so yeah, so so to stick it through it was easy because first of all, I have to do it well. I've started it. Yes. I'm kind of one of those people who have to finish rather right start as long as I can see it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I stuck it out because it wasn't about me. Yes, you understand? Yes, clearly. Yeah, clearly. it wasn't about me. It was about all the other people who died fighting for this. The ancestors. Reparation started right after slavery ended. Yes, and nothing happened. So the fact that I was able to tell the story and I. Yes. Learned so much, like why would I want to stop now? Because mm -hmm. it's hard. Mm -hmm. Hard is not an option. That doesn't mean anything. Exactly. Yeah, you know. Exactly. So yeah, and then these people are giving me their life story. They're yes. giving me this access. I have to deliver it. Yes. I have to have some integrity. I have to tell you know, they've given me they're not gonna give another person their mm -hmm. story. Exactly. So you have to deliver. Exactly. And deliver it well. That's right. 
Yeah. That's right. Well, I feel like I <laughs> so should say. So that's why. Well done. Well <laughs> done, you. Queen. Well done. Thank you. That is beautiful. Well, I think we're gonna stop because I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank okay, yes. so just to let everyone know, you can go to The Price of Memory on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have a Facebook page where you can see all that's happening with the film. I'm going to be doing a tour of the U.S. in February, and I look forward to hearing from you and getting all your questions and just And so when you do the tour, you're going to be doing college campuses? Colleges and communities. And communities. Mm -hmm. And so if people would like to get in contact with you to mm -hmm. say, please come visit our school, okay. they can contact you through the Facebook Facebook page, the price the of Facebook memory. page, or the price of memory at gmail.com. Okay, easy, perfect. Thank you so much <laughs> for taking you. this time with us. Thanks, I appreciate All it. All right, we'll be back again on Dr. Walls and Friends. Dr. Walls and Friends, where I find.